you know, as a coach, this is the scariest game of the year, the game right before Christmas, um, you know, and, and especially when you're the favorite and, and you want to uh, – I haven't lost many of these in my career in 30, um, 32 years of doing this and only a couple I could ever remember. And you just get so nervous, anxious, thinking about this game. And if your guys' minds are right, this week you see a lot of upsets. And – I'm just glad we won more than anything else. You, you know, you, you guys are thinking about going home. They've been stuck here since, you know, into August, and they're ready to go home. They're ready to see family, and they're thinking about presents and smelling grandma's cooking and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we 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 had some kids that showed a lot of character today in playing. Day Day's one of them. You know, this morning we didn't think he was going to play, and. He gutted it out, and, and lo and behold, he, I think he had his first double double in his career here. So, uh, just grateful that he was. He showed a lot of. This goes back to a lot of our guys who showed great character and toughness, being able to play today. Day Day, as he just mentioned, congratulations: twenty points, ten rebounds, five assists on the overall day. Good Christmas present to the team, but also for yourself. Talk about your mindset during today's game. I just had to like focus more on what I want to do and be like. A better leader, knowing that I was uh, going through some things. I just wanted to give my team like the win, so we can go home and have a good Christmas. Gentlemen, floor's yours. Coach, how many guys you suit up today? Uh, uh, what do we have? Eight. So we had eight played it, and suited up, and so um, you know anything over seven, I feel like we've got a great bench, you know, and uh, I think we, we had one foul out and. And uh, day day, and uh, and then we had two others, or, or you know, Nana had four, and I thought, um, or no, uh, Latrell had four, and uh, Nigel had four. So you know, you just worry. So unique officiated game today, uh, double technicals, and just the way the game was called, and and. Uh, it's Christmas. Crazy things happen this time of the year. But I do think, Nathan, I, th I think we're going to get some guys back here, uh, maybe if not not before the first of the year, but after the first of the year, before, you know, before the, the middle of J the J January, before my birthday, you know, which is <coughs> mid-January. And, you know, we talked about this in the locker room. It's just kind of, you know, just keep playing. And uh, I think that's the biggest thing for us It's just kind of, you know, keep playing and, Getting eight wins before Christmas is, a, I think, a big milestone. I, I know that's crazy to say at SFA. I never would have thought that, but I never would have thought we'd experience what, we, what we've experienced uh, with all the rash of injuries. Nobody's more beat up than this team is. Yeah, how much motivation does it give you to win that game? Like you're talking about the last game before Christmas, so you don't have that hanging in your head throughout the break. It's the worst feeling in the world. I think I've lost twice before Christmas before. And it is the absolute worst Christmas feeling. Three times, because we lost. When I was at Kansas, we lost to Arizona on the road. And uh, but it's the worst Christmas feeling ever to lose that last game when you're off for two or three days, and just just it just eats at you. And it's an awful feeling to sit there because your kids are happy and your wife's happy, and they're trying to act like they're sad because you're all upset and. You want to enjoy Christmas and, and uh, with them, and these guys are so resilient; they don't even think about it. They're out there, we're ready to go home. But you know, as a coach, you live and die with everything, and uh, you just want to bring Christmas cheer to your families and that kind of stuff. So um, it's tough. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we just you know now we get now we start think about Abilene for the next uh, week. Daddy, and I've been thinking about them since the last time they beat us in, in Las Vegas. <laughs> right, yeah. What do you do is stay in shape over the break and stay, keep your mind basketball focused, but yet have you know the balance of you know spending time with family and stuff over the holiday? Uh, I don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> with my uh, my foot uh, bothering me, I think I should like work on eating better. Yeah, hey, you just say, hey, man, you know, I got to rehab my foot. I probably shouldn't be on it. <laughs> Tell the, that's what you're gonna say, but just say, hey, I need my body needs a break. Yeah, I, I probably need to rest a little bit, but like, no, you do need to rest. I mean, he's got a torn labrum in his shoulder. He's got a, 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 a um, you know, I don't know what 
class, you know, this is how our season's going yesterday, guys. Like, he gets his foot stepped on. He can't walk. They take him back to get an X-ray. And I don't even – in the past, I always say, oh, he's fine, he's fine. But there was no doubt in my mind he had had a broken foot because every one of those X-rays, something's been fractured. And fortunately, it wasn't fractured. And But it hurt so bad this morning. What would you, what'd you tell everybody? That probably wasn't going to play. Couldn't play. Yeah. was in a boot this morning. Wasn't going to play. And our training staff did a great job of massaging it out, getting you to where you could at least try to warm up. And I think you tried for your brothers just to give all you could today, right? Yes, sir. And, and you know, because if not, we'd have had, you know, Nana and Robbie, you know, who has not practiced really um, since, you know, October. Because the last time he played, he didn't even practice, get to practice. He just got cleared to play the day he played. And then he got hurt. So he hasn't had a practice uh, until the other day. It's his first practice since October. It was this week in a, a skeleton practice. Right? <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, it's, and that's kind of how Derek's been. So, I mean, we've just been band-aiding. Y'all, y'all don't even know what we – I mean, we had five and a half yesterday at practice. You know, I mean, it's a – it's hard to get better. It's hard to get in continuity. Offensively, it's kind of why we look the way we look sometimes. I'm not making excuses. I mean, we're playing the game. You've got to win them. You've got to be better. Um, but it's why we look kind of – sometimes with some lineups, they don't look very good out there at times, right? Kind of patchy and that kind of stuff. So hopefully we can get a few good days of practice in and then, you know, then you insert the guys that have been hurt again. So you're going to go through that of inserting them who haven't played in six weeks, eight weeks, and and you're going to go through another rough patch and f- try to find another way to win. And, and we're excited about it coming back and have to be good on defense. And and uh, y'all don't you don't follow our stats like we do, but like the last since Northwestern State, our three point field goal defense has been off the charts good. Like at that point, we were giving up. We were a sieve. We were just giving up. You know, about nine and a half three point field goals a game, people are shooting about 41%. But since then, I think people are shooting, making four threes a game and shooting under 20% against us in the last four or five games. I mean, these kids have really focused in on going to the three-point line. And that's why we've been better. And should have won the last five games in a row, four or five games in a row. And now we got four of the next five at home, and we got to get on a streak. We haven't been on a streak yet. we got to get on a streak. You mentioned Robbie briefly, and he played a little over 12 minutes tonight and had seven rebounds and was second in total rebounds behind Day Day. Um, he was a little sporadic, obviously, but definitely brought energy. How big is that for your guys, and how much is that going to impact with, with the Robbies, with the Derricks, with even the Jules? Yeah, I mean, he's an active, energetic guy. I mean, that's, you know, I think that's something that he'll do is only get better. You know, he just. You know, really hasn't played in, in a year and a half, you know, and, and I don't think any of us know what he's capable of being or how good he's capable of being yet. I mean, day day plays against him or did this summer, this fall, he's a hard matchup because he is, he's a fast, he's quick twitch, he's a very athletic, he competes, and, you know, that's the stuff that this program's been built on. And... To, you know, he's but he's only limited in how many jumps he has, you know, right now through his injuries and all his legs are lower extremities. I mean, his injuries are lower extremities, and he's a guy who's had success with his legs. You know, he, he that dunk he had today was bad for him, and a lot of people thought it was pretty <laughs> yeah. good, but it's a, you know, he puts his, his uh, uh, kneecaps on the rim, so. <laughs> but he'll jump over your car. But, yeah, I mean, you know, average a rebound every other minute, which is basically what he got today. And I think if you go back and look in time, his, it, he's a high-volume rebounder. And that was – it's kind of been one of our weaknesses. And that's – you know, today we gave up a bunch of offensive rebounds. Um, based on the, uh, you know, the injury play, were you holding your breath when I believe it was Hawkins took that really tough foul? Yeah. Yeah, and, and not, Nigel got hurt yesterday, hurt his knee yesterday. Dede hurt his knee yesterday when – we went all of eight minutes of competitive physical practice yesterday, and Day Day hurt Hawkins' knee, so he missed the majority of practice yesterday. wasn't sure if he was going this morning. Um, yes, but I didn't want to show 
signs of, uh, of timidness when he was down. I, I, I looked at our trainer and I said, stay back. We need him out there. And uh, so, you know, it's par for the course for us right now. And uh, I'm glad it's a fifth-year senior. He's taking advantage of the opportunity he's getting. And uh, showed some great – not Nigel showed great grit and toughness uh, when he got knocked to the floor and, and made some key plays for us, especially in the first half. I thought he was really good today. All right, great brief time for the holidays. We'll see you guys back here for a home contest against Abilene Christian on the 29th. Congratulations and happy holidays. Thanks, and we'll need everybody against Abilene. Anybody that's in town that wants to see two high-level defending teams uh, on the 29th at Thursday night, come watch two hard-rocking teams play basketball, college basketball, come to the sawmill that night because it'll be a hotly contested two teams fighting for every inch and every space on that court. I know, It'll be tough. I know we were about to finish, but Day Day, last time Abilene was here, I believe you had that huge moment against them with a buzzer beater shot that basically won it for you guys and gave you some solid momentum ending conference play. Is that mindset going to be think like something that you're going to be thinking about over the break and when you guys get back to practice on Monday? Uh, that's not my my uh, mindset is to beat them by twenty. So, no close game. Just want to beat them by twenty. Sounds good. We'll see you guys then. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.